uh, you are participating in this year's Labs of Democracy 2022, and we are focusing on climate and energy issues, and you are from the beautiful state of Florida. Um, why are you participating in this program? Well, first of all, thanks so much for uh, creating this experience for me. I mean, I'm participating in the Aspen Institute because I do think that the world and our states are facing a crisis when it comes to climate and energy policy, and we're not going to solve these problems alone. We have to find common ground across political perspectives across the nation and the world if we're going to ensure a more stable, secure, and healthy planet. You are from a state which is very, very beautiful, <laughs> but is also feeling uh, the climate crisis every day, right? Correct. Yes. You know, so I represent District 47 in the Florida State Legislature, and I'm a Florida local. I was born and raised in Florida as a daughter of immigrants. Um, it's a beautiful state to call home, but we are surrounded by water. We also have always had high temperatures, but now it's getting hotter. So whether you live along Florida's coast and are experiencing sea level rise or you're an outdoor worker um, in agriculture or in a construction and you're feeling the heat. We also are seeing climate refugees come to Florida when hurricanes are getting stronger and more damaging, impacting some of the Caribbean and uh, Puerto Rico, which is leading to us as a state also having to manage those issues of, of climate change. And so we are absolutely ground zero. And we need leadership and we need ideas that go across the aisle to really take on this challenge versus avoid it, ignore it, and allow it to get worse. So convincing those who are not convinced is not always easy, but it is right. the job of every uh, policymaker, politician. Yeah. Um, how do you do that? So I take a lot of pride in being uh, an individual who looks for common ground. And I believe in building bridges while also never being afraid to hold others accountable. And uh, unfortunately, the political climate in Florida is a difficult one, as are many countries and especially states in, in America, where there's not alignment on the science, there's not alignment on the impact or the cause. And so we do have to get creative in finding common ground. And sometimes it's the fiscal argument. Sometimes it's appealing to people on security and efficiency and saving money. Other times it is more of an altruistic goal that we are running out of time and need to do something to save our planet and to save our communities. So you have to meet people where they're at belly to belly. And what I think has been really insightful from my time in the Aspen Institute is that we're hearing some really incredible ideas, some that are some that are big and ambitious, others that are incremental and 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 impactful, but maybe at a at a more realistic scale when the political climate is not as amiable to uh, a more uh, ambitious goal setting. So it's really, really insightful because it gives you inspiration to figure out what's going to be something possible for your state, while also, of course, maintaining the relationships and the connections um, transatlantically. Is there already an idea um, which stands out for you? Yes, absolutely. So a few. I mean, I have already been championing renewable energy goals and carbon neutral goals in my state and also really challenging some of the utility companies and uh, creating a more public awareness around the importance of climate change. But I was really, really intrigued, for example, by some of the, the economic uh, incentives and using carrots and sticks to try to push people and corporations to make the right decision. So the Green Energy Fund to help support uh, green startups, I thought was really, really interesting and something that would absolutely work in a, even in more conservative states. Um, the emphasis on uh, battery storage technology and just the new energy. You know, I mean, wind uh, is not necessarily an option in Florida because we don't necessarily have as much wind, but the advancements in solar and hydrogen, the research in fusion, um, I learned that Florida actually does work in fusion. We have a university systems that develop the magnets that are used in, in Princeton. So it's also really cool to see the, the interstate connections and the transatlantic connections that I know will, always con will only continue to blossom. And last question. If uh, somebody was to visit you in your district, what would you show them? Ah, <laughs> I love this question. Um, if somebody was to visit my district, I would show them uh, Lake Eola, which is... Uh, almost like our small central park in Orlando. It's walking distance from my legislative office and it, it it's uh, very much a, a symbol of Orlando. And of course, 
our amphitheater outside has also been painted with rainbows um, because Pulse nightclub is in my district. And I think it's important for folks to realize that in Orlando, we are inclusive, we are welcoming, um, we support every type of person. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to participate in the program and enriching it in the in the way you did. Oh, thank you. It's very bittersweet. Um, I wish there was more opportunities to come together in person, but I know that I built relationships both in the United States and internationally that I'm really going to cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you.